player motivation has been key to Drogheda's success this year. Could they muster one final big effort to claim second place in the league? Joanne Cantwell reports. Drogheda United's record this season may have been impressive, but their record at Dalemount Park wasn't so great. Paul Crowley tried to set that right in the opening two minutes. The visitors were on top from start to finish, and for large periods of the game were camped in the Bohemians' box. Greg Murray was to have a busy night. And the keeper didn't always help his own cause. Drogheda and Ryan Brennan in particular couldn't capitalise on his miss kick. But before the 25 minute mark, they had their lead. Kiernan Mulvena was only in the team because of a suspension for Declan O'Brien, and he was to have a night to remember. It all began when he latched onto Sean Brennan's through ball to set Drogheda United on their way to securing second place in the Premier Division. Bowes nearly had an unlikely equaliser ten minutes later, though. They didn't have much of the ball in the night, but did show rare glimpses of what they might be capable of when they did. Dinny Corcoran came so close to drawing them level. It was all before Evan McMillan found Andy Mulligan, who'd be disappointed he didn't at least find the target. Drogheda's dominance soon returned, and so did their goal scoring. It was Stephen Quigley who did the initial damage here. It was his layoff from Avena, which gave the striker a much easier finish this time. Two for Drogheda, two for Movena, and Drogheda on course for their first win at Daily Mount since 2006. But it wasn't over yet, and Bowes didn't make the Drogheda changing room too happy a place at half time. Corcoran forced Gabriel Sava into a bit of a flap, and Macmillan sneaked in to get the home side back in the match. Drogheda remained calm and started the second half just as they had begun the first. John Sullivan had a decent go at restoring their two-goal cushion. And soon after, Philip Hans' corner found the head of Alan McNally and a 3-1 lead was no more than Drogheda deserved. Bowes nearly got one back against the run of play when Keith Ward's free kick found the post. McCook needn't have looked so worried. Drogheda were soon back launching attack after attack on the Bohemians' goal with a few little party tricks as well. Murray was kept on his toes as his defence just scrambled. But that scrambling did the trick this time. They eventually forced Drogs into a weak shot. And Movena was to get in to complete his hat trick when Sullivan's cross comes shot was spilled again by Murray. It was a great night for the striker, even if his game did end early when he was stretched off before the final whistle. But that was the end of the scoring on another impressive night for Drogheda United. Unfancied by anyone before the season, Mick Cook's men finish in second place and with a spot in the Europa League. And haven't their fans enjoyed 2012? Well, you're always learning in this game, there's no doubt about that. And I'll continue to learn. I've made some mistakes along the way. I've played some players in positions that I probably shouldn't have. Um, but overall, I think, you know, we're, we're, I'm, I'm very pleased with, with the first season. And I think that we've won one cup, got beaten on penalties only in the other one. And we won the same amount of games that the league champions have won. So maybe we lost a couple of games, probably inexperienced, going gun hole trying, trying for wins. So but they've learned. And I think that we've only finished four points behind the league champions. It's a great achievement by the lads. Yes, well, in many ways, I suppose that result against Bohemians, a 4-1 away victory for Drogheda United, encapsulated their season, playing right down to the final game of the season and grabbing that runners-up spot in the Premier Division. Now, Liam, I mean, we've spoken about this before, but what Mick Cook has achieved there is, is quite phenomenal. EA Sports Cup, runners-up in the league and qualified for the Europa League. Unbelievable. Here he's, uh, he's gathered a team, of just they work hard for him and asked, he's asked them every week to go out and give 100%. They've done that from the first, the first whistle of the season. You know, I seen them earlier about three games on the season they played there, down at uh, United Park, and they were absolutely fantastic. You know, the way they got about the the pitch, putting tackles and working hard for each other. There's no real outstanding big name players he has, but it just shows you how good a manager Mike Cook is when he can bring them all together, 
work as hard and keep them going, like you know, because they, they're working. On, he's working on a shoestring down there, and they keep it going until the very end of the season and finish second. It's, uh, for me, you know, I, I think it would be my manager of the year. Yeah, he certainly had an outstanding season and so had the team. But uh, funnily enough, not one of them were uh, named in the Premier Division Team of the Year. That's the PFI, PFAI Player of the Year, or I should say Team of the Year, which was announced last week. And uh, that point was put to Mick Cook after the game. And this is what Mick had to say about it. Well, it certainly annoyed him tonight. And I hadn't got to give a team talk when, when, when there was no one picked for the Team of the Year. I just said to him, lads, you've you got to prove to people now that some of you should be in it. But maybe if, if we couldn't get individuals in the team, maybe they might give us Team of the Year. <laughs> Good on you, Mick. Well, listen, I mean, when you look at the PFI, PFAI team of the year, and I suppose we'll all have different opinions about who should be in what position, and that's the sort of debate this thing uh, normally generates. But, uh, I mean, has Mick got a point that maybe a couple of draw out of players should have been in there? Well, for me, you know, it'll tell you what the players know because they, they don't know what they're, who they're picking because Danny <laughs> Ventry is not on that team either. You know, well, this is the sort of debate we could have you know, all night, I, isn't it? I, I, you know, like for me, Danny Ventry has been the, you know, the outstanding player, you know, with with peers at the back. For me, that drives Sligo on, and he hadn't got on that team. So, you know, everybody has their opinions, but I think far draw had a. You have to look at it that, uh, you know, I suppose they're they're, they're showing the team here. Um, yeah, we'll just go through it quickly. It's yeah. Gary Rogers in goal, Ger O'Brien, Jason McGuinness, Gavin Pearce, and Ian Birmingham at the back in midfield. Sean O'Connor, Ronan Finn, James Chambers, and Stephen McLaughlin. And then uh, up front they went for Mark Quigley and Danny North. It's worth reminding everybody that it's the players who actually select this team, and it's uh, it's you know the most votes for each position, and the player gets in there, and that's as simple as it is, Liam, isn't it? Well, it is. You know, as you say, everybody's got their opinions on who should be playing. Like I'm the same as Dave. I think Danny Venter should have been in there. Yeah. I think uh, Gary Twig should have been there up front. No, no disrespect to Danny North. Like Danny North was having a decent season. Up they get injured, but he only played half a year. So, yeah. you know, you look at Gary Twig, 22 league goals. I still can't make it. So everybody's got their own, their own agenda, so to speak, or of who they're who they're picking, their mates they're picking, whoever. But you know, uh, I think Mike Cook is speaking from his own his own perspective, where every one of his players has done a job for him this yeah, year. Yeah. And uh, you know, when you look at individuals, you know, it's hard to pick out a, a real individual that they come out of Drada. Yeah, there's no doubt, Pat. They succeeded as a team, didn't they, Drada? Oh yeah. Well, that's what they have been all season. I mean, they started at the start of the year. They got very, very physically fit. And they've gone on from there. But like my concern all the time would be the second team, any part of the world will always get some people in it. And again, we, we've had discussions about it before the programme. And like they're showing up a formation that is 4-4-2 and an awful lot of the club is now are playing 4-3-3 or 4-5-1. And again, you look at Drahad, I mean, there is, there is a shout for one or two of their players, definitely maybe three, that you know, when you look at the team, there's four Pats players there. Again, we talk about if Pats don't win the Cup at the weekend... You know, they've really, you know, they've got Europe, but they've no other trophies. And I mean, you look at Prendergast played centre half, was very good. Brennan played very well. You yeah. know, Savin goal played very well. But the lads are same points as well, where there's other players like Ventra, obviously, Twig is certainty. So it's always going to it always going to cause sort of controversy. But I think they should have had someone indefinitely. Yeah, it certainly is. Now, it'll be very interesting, having said all that, who's going to feature in the MNS team of the year, selected by our 11 pundits that work on the programme, <laughs> and that'll be next Monday. So we'll have some very interesting points to debate, and it'll be nice to see if, uh, if some of the drafted players make it into that team. In the meantime, <laughs> let's look back at the game, and uh, one player who might have made a, a late call for being included, Tiernan Mulvena. It's always yeah. great for any player to score a hat-trick. And he got well, a good yeah, one at we, Daily. We picked him out here. Like, it's going a hat trick. You know, any time of your career is fantastic. And uh, it's just unfortunate the way the game it finished up. But Sean Brennan here, it's tremendous, tremendous ball in and a, a great finish. I think he's playing probably third fiddle right through the year. Um, Mulvaney with, um, with Peter Hines and, and Fabio O'Brien. Yeah. They've been, they've been mm. fantastic all year. Mm. But you can look, like people are questioning uh, Drahada. But they had, he had players come off the bench and make an impact. And uh, I think Murray, the, bo the Bohemian's goalkeeper for the third goal there, you know, <laughs> that was very, very poor. In the Premier League, you shouldn't be dropping balls in your own six-yard box that are coming into you that a six-year-old could catch, you know. But uh, I'm sure uh, Tiernan went to, you know, he was delighted with it. Yeah. He, he got his hat-trick and went away. But again, very unfortunate. At the end of the he was carried off with a broken ankle and just uh, unfortunate for him. Yeah, Liam, you would have loved to have got a crack at some uh, chances like that, wouldn't you? <laughs> and play against too many goalkeepers. I got in there, that one. I got, but uh, yeah, he, he's done well. He's followed it on. He's he's got his hat. I guess what you're looking for. He scored two, and you're always on the lookout for a third. And yeah, uh, he's seen the keeper spilling it, but. Uh, 
you know, it's a good good result. And you have to say, Bowes have done really well this season. You know, it's, a, it's an end of season game for them to have to play for. But I think Aaron Kellan will be pleased with the way his, uh, his season is going. Yeah, but you want to say about Mick Hook? Fantastic lads, isn't it? You know, like what he's done. Like I, I've been sitting in a manager's seat, you know, before, and you're trying to get a, you know, a, a very small budget. You're trying to get a, a team together that can compete. And Mick is saying, you know, he's with, you know, Manahan for seven years in the, in, in the lower division and in, in, in the first division, and then he comes up and does what he did. You know, it's absolutely fantastic what he's achieved with that team. And, you know, the, the players deserve tremendous credit. I know at the end of the season they want to get on Team of the Year and whatever, but, you know, they're in Europe. You know, that's what you play for as a player. You want to be on the European stage. They've got that. They've got a bit of silverware. But you have to say, Mick Cook, what he's achieved is tremendous. Yeah, an awful lot for them to look forward to next season, Pat, don't they? Oh, a huge amount. I mean, you know, you, you look back when they were there before, they the marvellous game against Kiev, which we keep going on about how close they were to getting to the next round with Barrow with a post. So, yeah. you know, they're not going to have the squad of players that they had then. But look, as Dave said and as Liam said, what Mick has done and galvanised the club and everybody around the club has been fantastic. Yeah, and congratulations to them. Runners-up in the Air Tristy League Premier Division this season and, of course, winners of that EA Sports Trophy as well. well